Clash of Clans. It's an old game. It has a lot of history. And when something has history, there's bound to be some cool facts you didn't know. Weird sh**. But mostly bored people looking way too hard into topics that's really not that deep to begin with. I'm one of those people. Today, we're going to be going over the Clash of Clans iceberg. You know, these charts where you list stuff from most known to least known. Yeah. Now I'm going to give credit where it's due before I get shit on. This all started when I found this iceberg created by Chara Boy. Nobody seems to have made a video about any iceberg for Clash of Clans, so I took that chart, removed a lot of stuff, and added a crap ton of my own stuff. Basically, making my own chart. Anyways, before we begin, I'll link my other two icebergs down below in case anyone is interested in those two. So, um, let's get right into it. Let's do this. Twenty twelve main village waterfall. Before we got the waterfall that we have today, which was added in twenty twenty, there was one in twenty twelve. You may have already noticed it from other videos or by looking at old gameplay and screenshots, but it was actually removed three months after the game came out because phones in twenty twelve were kind of sh. That waterfall took too much graphical power, you know. Phones were getting hot, exploding. Okay, none of that happened, but it did make the game a little bit difficult to run on the phones back in the day. Keep in mind, this was 2012, and not everyone had the newest phones, so people were trying to clash on that iPhone 3 and the Galaxy Negative 1. The Clash Universe It's pretty well known that the Clash Universe exists outside of Clash of Clans. I mean, this is pretty obvious if you played other Super Soul games, primarily Clash Royale. In a commercial, you can clearly see the worlds being the same, and you can expect the same with any Super Soul game that starts with the word Clash. Town Hall Sniping this was basically a strategy in the good old days. Yeah. Sorry. Well, reminiscing. You would take the town hall from a player and get trophies. And the person being attacked got a free shield. It was a win-win situation. Everyone went home happy. But after the December 2015 update, the strategy didn't really work anymore as just taking the town hall doesn't give you trophies. And it doesn't give the player on defense any shield. Pretty much, it was removed because Town Hall Sniping was just too easy for pushing and farming. Supercell didn't like easy. They wanted the game to be much more than just sniping and farming, so they Thanos snapped that sh**. Dr. Mushtaba and Stephanie. These sons of a guns basically took over the leaderboards a couple years back by cheating. Oh my god, bro. Oh, hell, hell no, man. What the f***, man? They had this massive elaborate scheme where they had probably hundreds of accounts in on it. Now I'm not so sure what's the exact story, but apparently they used to pay people to change their name to Stephanie or Dr. Mushtaba. You know, just for having that name I really want to punch them. They had a lot of accounts under the same name and they would win trade to keep setting records and be on the leaderboards. See, this is what happens when you have way too much money and your name is Stephanie. Anyways, they had a lot of their accounts banned after this happened. They apparently retired. <laughs> I found this video called One Last Interview with Stephanie and Dr. Mushy. It's just some gameplay, but in the comments, Dr. Mashed Potatoes himself commented that he would answer more questions on this channel's next video. Now, I took a look at the channel and honestly, I'm so confused. Like... <laughs> Is there something that I'm missing? This is like a fan channel for Stephanie and Dr. Mac and Cheese. The comments are even worse with everyone fangirling every time they commented. Now I'm not hating on the channel, maybe there's a different side of the story that I'm not aware of, so I'ma give them the benefit of the doubt. But something ain't right here. Larry. Larry is a skeleton in Clash of Clans. He's a bit different from the others in terms of the attention that he gets. He's pretty popular. He was first mentioned in a Clash of Clans ad where the witch is sus. And after that, he started to appear in other Clash of Clans ads. Clash Royale ads, troop descriptions, and he even appeared in a short film. Dude got his own movie called The Lost and Crowned. Project Blue Skies. This was essentially a rework to the entire Legends League. It used to be that Legends League was just a league like any other, except pushing up there was very difficult as clouding was a problem. Players would spend hours just looking for a base worth a couple trophies, so the intent of Project Blue Skies was to separate Legends League from the rest of the pack. Now, players in that league would have a fixed number of attacks and defenses each day. You don't even lose trophies if you absolutely butcher an attack. It's different. It's like Clash of Clans 2 up there. Global chat. 
Global chat in itself is a bigger story. I can make a whole video about it, but we will talk about global chat a little more later on, but let's just talk about what you need to know. So global was essentially a chat room where random people could talk and recruit new members and talk about whatever. That's already a red flag, you know, especially when global chat was filled with kids and, you know, adults play this game too. And yeah. Over time, it got a bad reputation because a lot of players were breaking the terms of service, using it as an underage tinder and using it for illegal activities and even making false claims that would be taken seriously by law enforcement. It would eventually be removed from the game on October of 2019. Strange Stone now I put this at the top of the iceberg because I feel like this stone is very common knowledge at this point. Everyone and their mama knows about this one. So this weird looking stone used to spawn at the village base, but was later removed by Supercell due to unknown reasons. It was said to be the original big rock design right when the game came out in 2012, but Supercell later changed it to be the big rock we have now. But yeah, there's only a handful of people that actually have the stone today. These players were probably part of the soft launch of the game that very few people knew about uh, back when, before Global came out. But we'll get into that more later. Super Bowl commercials. I'm not sure what they mean by commercials as there's only one that aired on a Super Bowl, but pretty much Clash of Clans had a commercial playing during the Super Bowl in 2015, being the most viewed Super Bowl commercial of that year. Dang! There was also a promotional event featuring barbarians and dragons in which they train five times faster, but I have no idea what that has anything to do with it, but yeah, that happened. Rearming traps. I think this is pretty well known knowledge by now as well, but back in the day you had to manually rearm your traps after you had got attacked. Not only traps, but stuff like Inferno Tower and Expo and... Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Today, the game does it itself, so that's probably why it's not super obvious to some people, I don't know. No breaks. In the early days of Clash of Clans, players could stay online for hours to prevent an attack on their base. Of course, this evolved into a problem where nobody in the leaderboards would go offline, even building robots and such to keep the device awake. Players looking for a base had an incredibly hard time doing so since nobody wanted to get offline. As a countermeasure, Supercell added a break limit where players have to take a break after continuously playing for a long time. Removed sound effects. This is just a number of sound effects that are no longer with us. <laughs> They didn't die, they just got removed. I don't know why I said it like that. I'm just gonna compile them and quickly play them. Goblin King. There's a lot of history with this Goblin King. He appeared in the tutorial and a lot of players believed or still believe that there's something more to him. Rumors of him being unlocked after beating all maps and fake leaks of him being the next hero. Obviously, none of these were real and he's simply a character that showed up in the tutorial. There ain't nothing more to it, stop digging deeper. Temporary Troops There's been a lot of troops in class that were temporary as part of an event or holiday. This includes the Ice Wizard, Giant Skeleton, El Primo from Brawl Stars. There's a few more as you can see here, so uh, yeah, pretty cool. Goblins targeting cannon in tutorial. Okay, so apparently there's been some discussions on why the goblins go for the cannon when there's literally a gold mine right there. Like this proves something deeper. Some evil force drew that goblin to the cannon without consent. Well, in reality it's nothing, it's just part of the tutorial, you know? Or is it? Town Hall 11 beta concept. So Town Hall 11 was announced in October of 2015 during ClashCon, but it wasn't released that month. It actually ended up coming around mid-December. But during that downtime of tweaking and development and making sure you can't Town Hall snipe ever again, the designs for the Town Hall changed, along with some animations for the Eagle Artillery. Here's a few side-by-side -side comparisons of the Town Hall and the Eagle Artillery. ClashCon 2015. So I just mentioned ClashCon, but what is it? Well, it was sort of like a convention for everything Clash. Think of like uh, PAX, TwitchCon, yeah. Well, Supercell loved the idea of doing one of these and it happened in October of 2015. I unfortunately didn't go as I was under 18 at the time, but there is tons of videos of it and it looked pretty awesome. Hog Riders targeting anything. 
In the early days when Dark Elixir troops were first introduced, Hog Riders used to attack anything. And I mean anything. Storages, collectors, your mom, everything you didn't want them to attack, they attacked. Of course, the Hog Rider was later reworked to only go for defenses, and holy moly, what a disaster that was. Town Hall 7s were 3 starring Town Hall 9s without moving a finger. It was crazy sh. They eventually did get nerfed. Uh, they probably have gotten balanced like 40 times by now, but yeah, now you know the history of the Hog Rider. Selling Billings. Once upon a time, it was possible to sell any building in the game back to the shop, except the Tell Hall, but there was this visual glitch that seemed like you could sell the Tell Hall, but it, I don't think it worked. Anyways, the feature was removed because people kept selling important buildings, then it just made zero sense to keep it. <laughs> so, yeah. 2014 Project Red Packs. There was actually two years that this happened, one in 2014 for a Tell Hall badge, and another time in 2016 for a King badge and a statue. All the visual changes were temporary, but you were allowed to keep the statue, and if you already had the statue, you'd have two, but you wouldn't be able to keep the batch, so you just have two of the same statues. No boat. This is basically talking about bases who have no boat because they haven't logged on since before the build a base update. They won't have a boat until they get back online for the first time in years. ClashCon 2016. This is the lesser known event because it actually didn't happen. So the first one took place in Helsinki and the 2016 ClashCon was scheduled for November in LA. Sadly, two months before it was supposed to happen, it was canceled and Supercell said it was to focus on their games more. Presumably because both Clash of Clans and Clash Real weren't as hot as they thought. At the time, of course. Troop levels being stars. This is just a bit of a throwback, I guess. Troops used to have pink stars showing their levels, so if it was a level 5, for example, it would have 5 pink stars. They later changed it though, I assume, because troops just got higher and higher, and you definitely don't want 9 stars just lined up on a troop, you know? Flying Machine in the build up base. If you've watched videos about facts or just stare at your base often when you don't know what to do with your life, you probably noticed the remains of a flying machine from Clash Royale in the builder base. It's near the boat, and you can see most of the parts you would need to build it. Of course, if you play Clash Royale, you might remember the one who built the machine is the master builder that is in the builder base. Anyways, this all makes sense. It's finally coming together. Spells costing gold. At one point, spells used to cost gold and it was changed to elixir because Supercell felt that it should be included with your army training rather than costing something used for upgrading stuff. George Yao, or Jorge Yao depending on how you read it, was a former number one in the Clash of Clans leaderboards. He held his position at number one for months, he was the first person to reach 4,000 trophies, and it was later revealed that his methods were rather uh, questionable. This was all back in like 2013, and ever since, George Yao has shied away from Clash of Clans and now works at Space Ape Games. I actually met this dude in 2018 for a game called Rumble League. I don't know, it was an interesting event, and it turns out Yao is chill as f Anyways, they made a video for that, and you can see me here, here, and here, and probably somewhere else. Anyways, I'm getting a little off topic, let's, uh, let's move on. Town Hall 7 not having a drill. At one point in time, Town Hall 7 didn't have a Dark Elixir drill, and Town Hall 7 players could only get it by attacking for it, which felt like the biggest scam. Later on, a drill was added to Town Hall 7, so it's all good. Lightning Dark Storages. Before December 2015, you could drop a lightning on storages and actually get some of that sweet loot from it. This was a well-known strategy and easy way of getting Dark Elixir, but of course, after that update in late 2015, storages had a resource shield. Now you actually had to attack for Dark Elixir. Damn! Dragon Human Skeleton. This one makes zero sense, like a lot of things in Clash, but this one especially. You know how when troops die, they spawn like a skeleton that rises up to be repurposed as a graveyard? Well, yeah, the dragon pops out a human skeleton too. Something tells me this <laughs> this isn't really accurate. Anyways, it's probably just an easter egg or super cell fooling around with us. <laughs> yeah. Peter $17. I don't know much about this dude, despite me being in the Clash community since 2013. 
I guess I ignored it because I didn't think it was all that funny. Don't hate me though, I'm allowed to not find something funny, you know? Anyways, Peter $17, as best as I understand it, was a personality made up by Galadon. He had a separate channel for it, and for the most part, it was like a community joke. That's right, it's Peter $17. Galadon was pretending to be someone else, and it was funny, he ha ha. Let's move on. Corner bases. When the game came out, people thought Class was just like other base building games where the end of the base behaved as a wall. It didn't. They'd organize the base like other games at the time and then learn the hard way that troops can be spawned outside the buildable area. Clown Wars. This was an April Fool's joke pulled by Supercell before the real Clown Wars was announced. They teased something called Clown Wars. Obviously, it was a joke and it was pretty funny. I assume this one is on the iceberg because it's beginning to be a little forgotten. I mean, it was eight years ago, so yeah. First look. Before Clash of Clans went global in the project, uh, what is it called? Uh, Codename Magic Days. There was like a first look type of video uploaded to YouTube titled Clash of Clans Universal HD Sneak Peek Gameplay Trailer. Typical title for 2012. Now, what makes this interesting is the game was different in many ways compared to what it looks like in its global launch. I'm not gonna dive into every little change, but some of the most obvious ones were different buttons and the single player campaign missions. The grass was green. There's a lot more stuff, but that's pretty much the obvious stuff, like I said. Super Gem Box 3000. This looks like it was simply an April Fool's joke by a YouTuber named Galadon, but of course, clickbait videos took it as an opportunity to milk the sh** out of it for views. So it spread across places like Reddit, YouTube, and Clash forums. Turned out the Super Gem Box 3000 was all a joke, who would've thought? Free Spell Stops Decorations This is nothing crazy, but a lot of players notice that free spells also freeze decorations. That's crazy. Freaky Goblin. I came across this video and uh, it looks like the goblin is a little bit more kinkier than we thought. Y'all tell me what y'all think about this. I call it the goblin party. Baby dragons are actually made of dark elixir. If you use the baby dragon a lot, this one may be obvious, but if you look closely at the baby dragon being taken out, it's uh, blood or whatever, it's dark elixir, despite being an elixir troop. Now, normal troops, elixir troops, they explode in elixir, and dark elixir troops explode in dark elixir. So you would assume the baby dragon being a dark elixir troop, wait, no, I got that wrong. You would assume the baby dragon being an elixir troop explodes in elixir but it doesn't. So yeah, there's a little bit of a mystery on why that happened. Builder not cheesing. I mentioned this in a facts video. It's basically a picture of the builder not cheesing. There isn't anything special about it other than the builder is always cheesing. And in this one image, he's not. Whoa. I think this is the only image of him not cheesing, which makes it very weird. It's not all that. It's just crazy to see him not cheesing for for the first time. Puzzle and Dragons collab. Okay, this one's cool, at least to me. Back when Clash of Clans was not even a year old, they did a collab with this game called Puzzles and Dragons. The reason for this collab was they had a deal because money talks, you know? Clash was popular and Puzzles and Dragons as well, so they started to promote each other. Now in Clash of Clans, there wasn't much going on. I think they just had a picture of it in game or something, but in Puzzles and Dragons, they went all out. They had dungeons, and characters from Clash of Clans, and it was very, very interesting. The only reason I know this stuff is because I did way too much research for that history of Supercell video. I almost feel like I work at Supercell with all this knowledge. Knowledge. Four laboratory entrances. This is basically talking about how the laboratory actually has four entrances, but most people don't notice it since you can only see two of them. If you look closely though, you can still only see two, but if you look even closer, you can see there's also two on the sides that you can't see. It's just an interesting fact. Clash Con before Clash Con. Okay, this is the last thing related to Clash Con, I promise. 
if we can even call it that, by the way, uh, it's not really a ClashCon, but let me explain. ClashCon is essentially a giant meetup for Clash fans, right? But a lot of people probably don't remember of the smaller, lesser known meetup that took place in Seattle, Washington on August 31st, 2014. I obviously wasn't there because I was 15 and didn't have plane money, you know, that YouTube money wasn't the same back then. But it looked like there was well-known YouTubers like Chief Pat, Galadon, and the legend, Dub War Gaming. Walls having upgrade times. This may be hard to believe, but Walls used to have upgrade times like any other building. But it's unknown what that time was because screenshots from that era are rarer than a f unicorn and unicorns don't exist. It was probably some dumb shit like five seconds, so that's probably why they got rid of it. Archer Queen s Okay, if you've ever touched a woman, you probably don't know what this is. I honestly didn't even know what the word s meant, but I searched it up and it's basically Archer Queen s I mean, I can't show much unless I want to get demonetized, but I'll show what I can just, just for research purposes. Goblin Glider. This is pretty much a troop that never was released, but inspired another one. On Reddit, a user SportsGuy3 asked a question to Darian, could you give us some examples of new characters, troops, heroes, ideas that were very close to making it into the game, but eventually didn't make the cuts? Darian then replied back saying, when we were working on Town Hall 12, we had several troops that we had tested out before we finally settled on the Yeti. One of the troop ideas was the Goblin Glider. It was basically goblins that flew in on little gliders and dropped down to attack resource storages and collectors. If I remember correctly, the Goblin Glider eventually inspired the builder base Hog Glider unit since we like the glider function. But the Goblin Glider felt a little bit too spammy. Loki, RIP. April Fools 2021, another joke. This time, it's a little sad, so don't laugh. Okay, I'm kidding. Before pets came out, they released a teaser for actual pets, and the cat on there was called Loki. Barbarian King just loves his Loki. It turns out that this was a reference to Darian's cat, a developer from the Clash team. And the cat had recently passed. The cat wasn't him in the video, just the name. Uh, Darian explained that he couldn't find a picture of Loki in the correct angle, but RIP Loki. Elixir Monster. Reddit user Clash.Ninja replied to a post by Darian asking him, are you able to share any details on ideas, concepts that were designed and or tested within the team that were scrapped? Darian replied saying, the Elixir Monster was a troop concept we prototyped during the development of Town Hall 12. The Elixir Monster was a troop that gained strength and size as it destroyed things. Similar to the Lumberjack, it would drop a ray spell after it was killed. In the end, the mechanic was really cool, but way too complex for the average player. Additionally, because the unit required to make the kill attack in order to earn its level up, with so many other troops attacking, it actually rarely made a kill, so it didn't morph or mutate, evolve, as fast as we thought it would. So it's a troop we might save for a rainy day and tweak a little more to see if we can get it to balance correctly. 2014 $20 gem pack glitch. I've talked about this one in a top glitches video, but like most things in this video, I guess we're talking about it again, but I'm gonna try and keep it brief. So in 2014, there was a glitch where if you bought a $20 pack of gems, it would glitch out. You could use the gems, go offline and come back to your gems being refunded. But whatever you use the gems on would have no effect. Basically, you had infinite gems, the ultimate glitch. Now, after Supercell fixed the issue, most people would lose that progress, but some people, some lucky son of a bitches, got to keep all their progress. Yeah, some people literally maxed their account with 20 bucks, and all I got with 20 bucks when I was tall 7 was enough Dark Elixir to almost, almost get the king. Yeah, maybe I'm a little salty. <laughs> but yeah, this was a wild glitch. Spring traps used to affect P.E.K.K.A.s. Now there's no proof of it ever happening except patch notes, but that's basically 100% confirmation. What I mean by proof is that there's no known gameplay. Trust me. When I did my fact series, I almost went insane digging every crack in the internet, including your mom's. I didn't find anything. Anyways, this is exactly what it sounds like. A P.E.K.K.A could once get flung across the map with a single spring trap. Army dying from destroying army camp. This is a semi-well-known fact, I guess. 
when the game came out, if you had an army camp full of troops and went offline, somebody could attack your base, destroy the army camp, and the troops that were in there would get a one-way ticket to heaven. <laughs> it was not a good time, especially how troops took hours to train. Man. The Wizards of Ivory Tower. Okay, in the tutorial, I don't know if it's still there or not, but they explained that the wizards that came to help you came from Ivory Tower. No one knows where or what the hell Ivory Tower is, but someone asked a developer about it and he had no clue. But hey, I'm gonna cut him some slack. He hasn't been developing since the beginning of the game, so maybe he doesn't actually know what it is. Anyways, the most reasonable explanation is that it's just a saying. On wiki, it states an ivory tower is a metaphorical place or an atmosphere where people are happily cut off from the rest of the world in favor of their own pursuits, usually mental or esoteric ones. Now that sounds like a good place to be in. Now we all know wiki can be wrong sometimes, so I did a little bit more digging and found an old post on Twitter by Clash of Clans themselves. They pretty much dodged the question, like completely just ignore it, and <laughs> basically confirm it's just an imaginary place. Or is it? Toho 13 Exploding Walls. Okay, I think this one is pretty cool. In an AMA a couple years back, a developer answered a question about the possibility of walls having additional utilities. He responded that during the Toho 13 developments, the walls almost had exploding traps on them, but it was ultimately decided that it was a no-go. I actually went through the effort of asking a developer for footage of it, and luckily they still had some sitting around in the dusty hard drives. Here's what they sent. <laughs> Come on, man. It's, it's been a while since the last Rickroll. You know I had to do it. Wallbreaker Spikes. This was a strategy used to fool the Wallbreaker AI in the early days. Wallbreakers had the same IQ as a four-year-old. Basically, the Wallbreakers AI was designed to go for walls. Well, obviously they still go for walls, but back then they went for any wall. So people made these funny looking bases with wall spikes so that Wallbreakers would attack those spikes first and never break the base's walls. Eventually it was fixed, but the elixir cost was doubled for the Wallbreakers. More than one builder on an upgrade. This has never been a thing, so I assume it's talking about fan ideas or some kind of visual glitch. But I can guarantee you if you've seen this somewhere, it was either Photoshop or like I said, a visual glitch. The Order. This may sound familiar from the builder base. The first person you attack is Master Jimmy in the tutorial, and he was in a clan called The Order. Do you remember? Probably not, but yeah. Well, it doesn't take a genius to figure out that that player wasn't real. It was a bot. I don't know if Master Jimmy was real, but the clan is actually the first ever clan to have ever existed. It's a hidden Easter egg, and I think that's pretty dope. The clan still exists today, as far as I know, so that is also pretty cool. Illicit material and village trading. I'm not exactly sure what the illicit material is referring to on this one, but if I had to guess, probably connected to another entry further down the iceberg. As for village trading, this is a pretty common practice of simply selling your account, trading, or even scamming people out of their accounts. A lot of this activity took place in global chat, but ever since global has been removed, it mostly takes place outside of the game on various websites. It is against the terms of service, so I do not recommend anyone trying to buy, sell, trade, or anything. Your chances of getting scammed and banned are pretty high, so. Don't be stupid. Town Hall 8 Flag. I don't get this one. Listen up. Someone at Supercell made the effort to get rid of a small detail in the game, and I'm furious. Literally unplayable. Okay, it ain't that big of a deal, and I didn't even notice, but Town Hall 8 used to have a flag, and it got removed one day, and no one knows why. And if you're thinking about that special flag for the red events, it's not that. Town Hall 8 had a flag that's been there since day one. Some people have theories that the flag represented the last Town Hall because at one point, Town Hall 8 was the highest, and I guess that makes sense, but removing it years later just doesn't make any sense to me. Lightning spells affecting gem boxes. This was an April Fool's prank pulled by Supercell. 
They said gem boxes would be affected by lightning spells. You know, most people got the joke after remembering it was April Fools. Like my Hispanic dad used to call it, April Pool Day. But Reddit and YouTube got together for a cringe fest with people asking if it was true and showing gameplay of themselves doing it. <laughs> now that's some funny shit. Sub 200 farming. This was a strategy back in the day where you used to purposely drop below 200 trophies and you'd find more loot than a man should ever have. It was basically dead bases that had gradually lost all of their trophies, but one thing that wasn't dead was those sweet collectors. The only drawback to this strategy was that you'd have to be online the entire time farming down there because as soon as you got off, you'd be back in like Champions 1. And getting back down wasn't easy at all, it was a chore to get down there. Anyways, the strategy has faded like a fart in the wind ever since they killed old school farming. Donated troops walking into water. Troopers back in the day were probably on something. They used to walk straight into the ocean. Well, they were probably heading to the boat, right? There was no boat. Anyways, yeah, there's still footage of this somewhere and it's kind of funny. Eventually, donated troops got their own path and they'd walk straight into the woods instead. Banned hackers. I assume this is talking about the many people that have been banned for ma tools, or it could be about the very few times someone has successfully hacked the game. There isn't many examples, but in one case, some dude was spotted wrecking bases with no loot, with hundreds of giants. Now that right there alone is almost a war crime. No loot? All that effort, you, you hacked the game to- <laughs> Now as for the hundreds of giants, it was actually pretty hilarious to see it. I think he was definitely banned, but he he left some kind of legacy. The dude who hacked Clash and used hundreds of giants. Norsk chat. This was great until it wasn't. Norsk chat is basically global chat, but you had the game language set to Norsk. Now I don't speak Norsk, but I do be speaking facts sometimes and I remembered using this chat back in the day. In the simplest terms, Norse chat was a way to speak to higher level players and find good clans. Presumably because the regular globals were pure cringe. Now after the word got out, more and more people started to visit this Norse chat, and eventually, after some time, Norse was just as cringe. Demon on the grass. This one is one of the oldest myths, or I don't know what you would call it, but it's been going on since whenever this game came out. Basically, a lot of players believe they see figures in the grass, specifically a figure called Baphomet. Now, Baphomet is basically a mascot for the devil. I'm not really sure if these figures are actually a thing or if it's just grass looking like something because if you didn't know, humans are really good at detecting faces in random sh So maybe this is a case of that. But yeah, I have to admit, there does look like there's something sketchy there. It almost makes me want to go to church this Sunday. This recruiting. This sounds fake, and I couldn't find much information about it. In fact, it's only on the video because someone mentioned it on a Reddit post about making a Clash of Clans iceberg. They explained it was mostly an issue on Minecraft, and that it probably wasn't prevalent in Clash of Clans. So why'd you mention it? Anyways, I did a bit of digging and found an article on how recruits. At one point, it explained how pro supporters would gather in Minecraft to jerky, I mean, to discuss stuff. Stuff. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like I was looking for proof that Bigfoot existed. Let's move on. Scrap Skinwalker Troop. I couldn't find any information about it, but I assume there was a leak or a myth that we were supposed to have a Skinwalker type of troop. I'm not even sure, but what the hell is that? I like horror movies, but hell no, nah, dog. Dark Web Gem Scams Have you ever heard of cheap gems? It's basically a way to get gems at a discount, but don't go searching for it if you're thinking you're getting a deal of a lifetime. You could end up with negative gems and a banned account. The way these people got these gems cheap and sell them is with a stolen credit card. Now, I'm a little too dumb to explain this stuff, so I'm gonna read a couple lines from an article. Chrome Tech Security a German-based IT and security company has discovered evidence of a large scheme where scammers use stolen credit cards to buy in-app currencies from mobile games, Clash of Clans, Clash Royale, and Marvel Contest of Champions. Then sell those currencies on the gray market for cash. Now, the worst part about this 
is that people actually play Marvel Contest of Champions. Anyways, these cheap gems aren't a good deal after all. Codename Magic. Okay, I forgot to write the script for this part of the video, so I'm just gonna freestyle what Codename Magic is. So Codename Magic was basically the game before Global Launch. They explain this in the Art of Supercell book, and there's a lot, I mean a lot, of really cool pictures of how Clash looked before the game came out. It's crazy. The old logo, names, old heroes, lore. Anyways, yeah, basically Codename Magic is the code name that they gave the game before the game came out, if that makes sense. Headhunter stole Inferno Dragon's shadow. This is an interesting fact, I guess. At one point, the Inferno Dragon appeared in the game without a shadow. Supercell stated that the Headhunter may have stolen the shadow. A lot of people think this goes deeper than what it actually is, but <laughs> it was just a glitch and Supercell made it fun by explaining that the Headhunter may have stolen it. That's literally it. Dead bases belonging to actual dead people. Yes, sadly people do pass and their bases remain in the game. That's how it works in every multiplayer game, but there's something creepy when you think about those dead bases you find. Could it actually be from a person who has passed? And the only thing you think about is, wow, free loot, one million each, holy sh**. Yeah, it does happen a lot more often than you think. There's even Reddit posts claiming that their clanmates have died and they're still in the clan. Now I don't know about you, but the more you think about it, the creepier it is. Negative trophies. It's actually possible to get negative trophies as weird as it sounds, but it's not easy and chances are it probably doesn't work. It's pretty much a glitch that only ever happened twice or three times. OP explained, no, this wasn't edited. I basically used a trick where you place a troop and press next while at one trophy, which took me to zero. But my next attack said I would lose one trophy if I lost, and I did. Thus landing me at negative one trophies. There's another post where this dude did it as well, and a comment by someone else claiming that they have gotten to negative 10 trophies. OP states, I have gotten down to about negative 10 trophies by doing this when I had about two or three trophies to start with. I assume the game thinks you are still at two trophies and will still deduct trophies even after you pass zero. Come on man, where's the picture? Phones have had screenshot abilities since, I, I don't know, 2009. You know nobody's gonna believe you without no picture. It's like the first rule of the internet. Well, probably not, but it, it's definitely a rule. Anyways, like I said, it probably doesn't work and these posts are pretty old. Global chat things. I'm not sure about the ring part, but there were definitely some shady things going on in global chat that were reported. I can't exactly say some words unless I want to get demonetized, so I'll probably have to censor some stuff. But uh, yeah, so when global still existed, there were tons of reports on children being by else on global chat. In one case, a man in California even made a trip to the UK to meet a 14 year old and then proceeded to do some uh, stuff. He was eventually arrested in 2014 and after his appeal was rejected in 2019, he was sentenced to 25 years. The man said that he had met the girl on Clash of Clans. Yeah, anyways, there's more stories like this but this is just a quick explanation of this entry and what it's supposed to mean. There probably were like these rings but I couldn't find any information about that. Illegal bases. There's nothing illegal about these bases, but they were incredibly weird, like missing buildings, having obstacles that are impossible to get, and even having buildings that aren't even unlocked at that certain town hall. Now, there's no confirmation how these bases exist, but Supercell often fixes these bases, so I'm assuming that they're either glitches or a hack that Supercell doesn't want the public aware of. A lot of people like to say that these are developer bases, but trust me, they're not. Developers use a developer build of the game that us, YouTubers, also use to record footage for new updates. Developers do not mess around in the actual game, so this would be stupid to be a developer account. Farming bots. I don't know if it's still relevant nowadays, but there were these popular 
bots years back until Supercell did something about it and now your chances of getting banned aren't worth the effort. It's basically tools that would help you farm easier, look for specific bases. It sounds cool but don't mess around with Supercell. They got eyes on everyone. Well, they're not spying on us but if you do something sketchy on your account, that raises some red flags. School As bad as it sounds, there's been no real scenario where a clash of clans has directly led to such event, as far as we know. But threats do exist and is often taken very serious. There's been many occasions where players posted on global chat or even their own clan. Now global doesn't exist anymore, but if you ever see this in your clan, don't hesitate to report the player. This stuff isn't really a joking matter and you never know when someone is joking or being serious. So guys, that should be it, holy sh I feel like, that's the longest video I've ever done. I don't know if you can hear the difference in my voice. I can definitely, but once I start editing the audio and stuff, I don't think it's obvious, but I need to lay down. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I'll leave the link down below for the actual iceberg. I'm gonna post it on Reddit. Like I said in the beginning of the video, check out my other two icebergs. I did one for Clash Royale and Brawl Stars. They're pretty good videos. They're like 20, 30 minutes long. So just sit back, relax, and enjoy those as well. And uh, yeah, I will see you guys later. Have a gaming out. Peace.